Greetings, Lazarus members, and I'm delighted uh, today to have uh, one of my dearest friends uh, join us. Um, she's a fellow of the New Earth University um, and doing some tremendous coursework there. Um, we're talking today uh, across a subject which I think you're going to find be increasingly becomes paramount to the way in which we um, view ourselves and so-called reality, which is really supplanting the old mythos of um, time and money and fear with the elevation of art and beauty and consciousness, the stuff that um, certainly I've been banging that drum for a very long time. And Jane is um, a prolific writer and poet and artist, a longtime uh, contributor and friend of the Lazarus Initiative. Um, you can read her uh, editorial, which is called Primary Water, in the Lazarus Journal, Volume 4, which is available, I'm told, this month. Um, and today we're discussing her radical new project, which is about creation currency. It's called creation currency. Creation currency as antidote to the Great Reset. Jane, very happy to have you here. Thank you, Sasha. It's very happy to be here. Okay, so we've decided we we are not really, we're parachuting straight into this with a whole bunch of images, not exactly random, but we're just gonna be filing through images and then speaking to them, what, what they evoke as part of this, this broad conversation. The question that we kick off with obviously is what is creation currency and how is creation currency an antidote to the great reset? Okay, so creation currency is basically high vibrational wealth. So if you're an artist, dance, sing, tell jokes, share ideas, a whole gamut of things. But as long as it's in a soulful, positive way, which holds a high vibration, you'll have creation currency. Okay. And we, we all have it. We were born with it. Good. What is the dance at the Moulin Rouge by my favorite artist, actually, of all time, Toulouse-Lautrec? Uh, I studied him um, as a child. I was madly in love with him. Aristide Bruant and uh, all the shen shenanigans going on um, in, at that time with the French Impressionists. So there's very little I don't know about uh, Toulouse-Lautrec. Why did you choose this image? I chose this because number one, they're dancing and they're just throwing their creation currency all over the place. And the other reason I chose it was because I believe Impressionism was the last real art movement we had before they butchered it and took it. Beautiful. The passion of creation, Joachim Sorolla. And this is the in the um, uh, 19th, uh, late, late 19th century, and early 20th century. Just because it is the passion of creation, I thought it would be a beautiful image to show. I, I believe it's the period of romanticism too. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Must toiling man forever meet disgrace and eat his hard earned bread with heated face and all his acts in dull oblivion lay. <laughs> That's on labor, creativity and patriotism. Joseph Mallard, William Turner, what a magnificent creature he was. He was one of the most amazing artists ever. He's one of my all time favorites. Yes. So that this is just on the theme of, of creativity to just get your, what is the contrast between what the great reset creates around us is this toiling man and this hard earned bread with heated face and this dull oblivion. This is what they want to deliver to us, yet our creativity is the most valuable stuff on earth. Right. And they would rather we believed that gold and platinum were the most amazing assets you could ever get your hands on. Right. But it's really us. And so they've taken that from us, usurped it, and used it for their own agenda in a magnificent way. Very good. And so what we have to do is turn around and take that back because this creative currency stuff is the most powerful thing you can ever get your hands on. And the reason I'm showing a bank here 
is because that is what they use to control us. Yet we have something so much more superior to that because I believe a lot of them aren't even created, creative themselves. You know, these bloodlines and these royals and these monarchs, they don't have it. They use us for it. And also in, I, I found it really interesting in this particular picture that there sits the bank from Tartaria and across the street is a little shed and there's the little horses and carts that we just rode in on. Yes, indeed, indeed. Oh, and this is really interesting because it's called the Palace of Westminster. And now that today is the Houses of Parliament, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes absolutely. So right. it, it was a palace. So this is another of their usurping of the magnificent, incredible Tartarian architecture that, that I believe that they yeah. just moved into and said, look how powerful we are. The golden look, age. Look what we've created. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. And then um, this illustrates to all of these pictures are from the 1800s because they're doing the same thing today that they were doing back then. This is called the bad doctors. And that is part of the great reset because the COVID element would now be the, what was once the black plague followed by the Renaissance, which to me was the reset, another reset. Yeah. And, and the, re the Renaissance being the art orgy that it was, I believe what happened was as we came out of the out of, out of that Renaissance period, art had been elevated to such a degree that the creativity level had been lifted. And that is when you move into the area where all this new technology and using the ether for energy and with the electric bikes and the electric cars and yeah. all of that, the Zeppelins and all of that came in after, right after the Renaissance. And, and also the, the Vatican was, was there in Italy when all that was happening, funded by the de Medici family, which is one of those bloodlines, yeah. which is what leads me to believe that that was actually a reset. And that reset was to absolutely annihilate and excommunicate the divine feminine from the arts. Going Very good. So, so what put a, put a date on this, more or less? <laughs> well, you had the fall of Rome. Um, then you had the Dark Ages with the Black Plague, and then the Renaissance was basically the 1400s all the way to the 1700s. But remember back then things moved way more slowly than they do now because we've just speeded up time so fast. So that was a failed, that was a sort of a successful reset, but kind of a failed one. Yeah, I understood, understood. And, of course, taking into account um, seminal datelines um, from the from the fall of Rome and the um, and in fourth century, the Council of Nicaea and the weaponization of, of Christianity, the commandeering of Christianity by the flailing uh, Roman Empire, um, which then propped itself up using the Christed um, gospel and then took that into full fledged um, blood ritualism in the Roman Catholic Church predicated on the murder of the Cathars, marching through 1066, Doomsday, which was the really the onset of bureaucracy and codification of human beings, registration of land and titles and bands. And the Battle of Hastings. All of that stuff, taking us really up to the 15th century, a seminal series of datelines, 1430s, 40s, and 50s, uh, in the 15th century, which was the onset of the real um, um, pestilence of the Roman Catholic Church, meaning to say the doctrines of discovery, Hernan Cortez setting off and founding, planting a flag in Mexico, and, and the massacre of the black skin, brown skin, red skin, yellow skin people all around the world that issued from that. That was connected to the nine gates of hell opening up which closed in 1987 with the harmonic convergence and then led to 2012, 2020. And really we're right now in the quickening. We're in the quickening. But um, what inspired your concept of, um, of creation currency? 
Oh, it's, uh, I read this study that this guy did. His name is uh, Dr. George Land. And so I had just started making this book, Learn or Teach the Basics of Art in 10 Steps, because I had felt like there was this dire need for us to have something, all of it under one roof. Yes. That you could get your hands on, because this book includes inspiration methods, positive meditations, and it's very simple. So this is that Dr. Land's um, yeah. show he put on. What you're looking at now is how the brain is affected when you go into the divergent side of the brain, it tends to spark up the whole brain. And then when you're in stress and fear, obviously your whole brain isn't lit up and then you're, and, and there's a middle area there. But anyway, the point is here that what happened was I was reading this study and then he started talking about the remedy and <laughs> I just cracked up laughing because he said the remedy is to go to your little five-year-old self and go into your divergent side of your brain and take a fork and devise how many ways you could improve on this fork. Very good. And so I was thinking, why, Mr. Dr. Land, why don't you take that fork? And put it where the sun don't shine because this doesn't help humanity at all. What what the fork that we need to look at is the fork in the road of humanity, whether it goes the demise way or into this beautiful new golden age. Yeah, understood. That, that's what we need our brains okay. for. So let's catch so up with the slides a, here. Let's talk about unlearning. Well. This is badly put because he says unlearning and then he says divergent thinking, but it looks like it says unlearning divergent thinking. Yeah. So this man who discovered a way to test creativity and came up with the realization that 98% of, of us are born creative geniuses. Yes. And this is his slideshow, not very creative. I'd move on to the next one if I was. <laughs> so... So the outcome of the study was that he started with five-year-olds. Well, first of all, he went to NASA, and they they asked him to do the study. Maybe even uh, your friend Shanae Sony did the study. Who knows? But anyway, he then met his a, a, a colleague, and and they both went out into the big, wide, real world, and they got sixteen hundred children, and they tested them at the age of four, five. And as you can see, by the age of 10, the, there was only 30% of that 1,600 left creative geniuses. Yeah. And then as they got to 15, it was only 12. And then when they reached adulthood, it's down to 2%. So they, they concluded that what basically our education system does is just wring the creative, creativity right out of us. Yeah. And so this is my solution is to bring the two parts of the brain together so they work cohesively, cohesively, maybe even merge, mm. use your entire brain. Go Sorry to, about that. Isn't this is that, so bloody that, typical. It, hold, hold the line there. I've got to stop this bloody Skype. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Carry right on. So I'm not a scientist. But I am an artist and mm -hmm. I understand the process of creating art. And it's really, really quite a magical process when you really go into it because it teach you, teaches you to take 3D elements and your art materials and you can actually move into a 5D realm with your paints and, and your brushes and yeah. your as long as you've learned those basics and you know what they are. Yes. Because as you're painting, you are holding all those elements of the basics in your head at one time, such as composition, light, color, form, and every brush you struck that you make, you must hold all that in your head at once. And you're arranging things. You are getting rid of things you're bringing things in yeah and this is this is what nature does in the creation process so as you're doing this as well because you're so focused 
you are losing time. And as soon as you lose time, there you are with the all that is in no time. And that you sound, is you amazing. sound like a you sound like a poor man Sasha Stone lecture on time here. <laughs> I'm joking, darling. I, I'm I, I know what you're saying. Of course, I've been promulgating this and, and preaching it uh, for an awful long time. So this audience knows n- understands full well that the well the reason time. that I'm bringing I'm bringing that up is not to steal anything that you know about. It's to to show the process because when you look at music, art, history, geography, biology, science. None of that happens in that process. Correct. And if you teach children at a young age, from a young age, if you teach them art properly, they will be able to use the actual art process itself. Yeah. Forget about the image they make. Forget yeah. about how what the painting looks like, you know. They will be able to then take that process as they are being educated through the system very much unlike the, what it is today with his results, Dr. George's results, and whatever chosen discipline they choose to follow, whatever passion is theirs, they can then take that and apply it. And for instance, the other day I went to quantum.gov and I saw that they were looking for worldwide, they were searching for people who could take this new quantum information and apply it to new ideas and and um, products and things like that but they couldn't find anybody in america why because we haven't been educated properly in in our our creativity so what i'm saying is also in that space where you lose time when you're painting you're immediately connected to the cosmos and universal information and knowledge and it comes through yeah and you get and you're inspired by that And a lot of the problem today is that everybody's so busy on computers, they're creating art on their computer, and that is actually a firewall to the connection to prime creator. Very good. So there's very few artists left. I think the reason I put this one in is that it's always the same old stuff. I mean, you can see the beautiful sculpture there, but you can see Goya's um rendition of what was really going on yeah not very much more different from what's going on now and these this is the great reset people these are the satanic elements that we're fighting yeah and it should be a pretty easy job to overcome them with our creativity and by contrast venus italica by canova well very beautiful because at the same time there's beautiful people and loving wonderful people far more than they are these um little bloodline families napoleon the first on his imperial throne of course that was those times but you know we we look at we still have royalty we still have the monarchy i'm sure king charles isn't going to last but there we go they're trying to push it forward into the future and that yeah. its time has gone and the reason the flood is there is because it's evidence of the mud floods yes i'm so i put i put that in because that's a huge part of where we came from and how the mud floods were used to crush very and interesting destroy all very that interesting. beauty that, that was tartaria william blake i traveled through a land of men land of men and women too and heard and saw such dreadful things as cold earth wanderers never knew. Wonderful. And there's this sun god. Right. Ra. So we've been dealing with this for a long, 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 long time. So the the answer now is to take the children, teach them, properly how to do art so in my in my dreams this old crazy lady here <laughs> dreams dreams about handing out a protocol to the world on how to teach art properly so that we can get to this place and then there's the people with art freeze you know they started painting or drawing when they were young and suddenly their teacher came along and gave them an f because they were copying something and it wasn't quite the right color and then they just gave up 
Yeah. And it, it and teachers use their personal preferences, which is an ungodly thing to do. Well, it's with a crime. Them. It's a crime, indeed. And another thing they do is called minor surgery, and they'll take a pen or something and correct yeah. something yeah. on a student's work. Yeah. <laughs> it's unforgivable. So you've got art freeze, which is easy to fix, and and it, it can be easily fixed by going through and starting all over doing the basics. And here you have what I'm trying to say is the power of what memes have done for patriots in the time that we're in now. I actually did this uh, meme myself, but it it says it perfectly. There's the World Economic Forum and the, the Pope's going down and it's like he's at the top of the whole thing, really, him and the Queen were. And he's probably going to die very, very soon. So I just don't see them getting anywhere with their great reset. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've seen those pictures, but there's one of Klaus Schwab in a bridal bikini on a beach. And there's another one of Cabreus <laughs> World Health Organization wiggling his little Oh, I, I, I played that to my audience, I think. Yes, um, uh, Tedros Bass, uh, T Tedros, whatever his name is. Um, Cabreus. To, yes, the World Health Organization Secretary General wearing wearing his little lady's halter piece with his little titties hanging out in a tranny club. Yeah, no, that 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 was very, quite extraordinary when that hit my desk. Loved it. So how can we take these people seriously, really? Well, yeah, I mean, it begs the question, how do we take them seriously at the time of Queen Elizabeth I, for Christ's sake? You know, the woman poncing around with the ludicrous costumes on a white face and all the romantic um, bullshit that's been attributed to that that era. Um, not forgetting that it was her spy master general, Sir Francis Walsingham, who, who really began the genesis of the whole, you know, surveillance and, you know, spying and... Uh, intelligence communities, CIA, MI5, all of that stuff, you know, OSS, all of that stuff issued off uh, Sir Francis Walsingham, Spy Master General under Elizabeth I. Point being, this has gone on for an awful long time, this theatrical production. And like you quite rightly say, Jane, I mean, for God's sake, it's, it's over, you know, it's dead, it's dead. All right, so this is about what they've done to art to obfuscate us, you know. If they've obfuscated art, they call this Duchamp's urinal art, and then this Catalan's banana was very much more recent. And they got people to buy this art. It, what, they didn't even buy the banana or the masking tape. They bought a piece of paper that he signed, and it had the instructions on how to install this art so you know the angle of the banana and the length of the masking tape and there is a tack underneath it that that goes into the wall and the only way you could put it up was if you got his little piece of paper with that this is just ridiculous and no wonder people just shake their head and they go oh I think I'll just buy a still life because I yeah, know and, what it is and not not you forget know? not forgetting Jane that 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 art in that sense has also been um, the utility of um, huge scamming of fraud and scamming and money laundering, huge. I mean, billions and billions and billions of dollars worth. I mean, it's a huge industry um, buying art with an attributed value of, you know, $348 million for some risible little sketch by um, Picasso or whoever. And then that, that receipt um, just becomes really a tax a tax uh, um, a little piece a little chit that allow allows you to play games um but the, the point the point being that that I can't remember what the figure is but it's something like it's something like 60 odd percent of all the most expensive valuable art pieces on the planet don't even see the light of day they're in warehouses no one can even see them because they're under That's correct key. yeah. That happened to Basquiat's skull painting. He sold it for 19000 And years later, after he had died, I right. think they turned around and sold it for like $110 million. Yeah. And also, speaking to the money laundering thing, you know, they, they did that big time in Mexico. And then the yeah. government put a stop to it. 
And to bear witness to that statement, you said the art sales dropped by right. 70%. Right, right. And what, what, this, what this image speaks to here is the fact that, you know, we're, we're told that most people say, I can't even draw a stick figure. And they look at the Van Gogh and they go, oh, you, if you become a fine artist, you'll just end up being poverty stricken and starving and mad. And so the only way you can make money from art now is through a commercial venue. So that's where everyone's being steered toward that because it's safe, you yeah. earn a living. And so it sucks that fine art element. Well, here's a, a good example of, so USD $12,740,000 for this. Oh, my Lord. Would you look at that? And there it is. That's your, you know, and we put up with this and it's all the elitist ways of, of uh, moving money around. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. And Soho and Hollywood have so many things in common. I put this here because they have, it's called sip and paint wine, part, wine art parties. And everyone in the whole room paints the same thing while they're drinking wine. And this is supposed to be called a, an art class. And this is this is the, the the lows that we have come to as far as art. And and it's copying something. Everybody yeah. copies it. So here we are. Love it. And this also speaks to the power of images, how the great reset Schwabian philosophy, you know, of it's it's to use this art to gather people to go to war and they've used it for so long in this way. And it's just a very simple thing for us to pick it up and turn around and aim it right back at them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can do this, we can do this. You know, there's more of us than there are of them. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Now on, um, The question I had here was why is visual art so um, actually before that, how does one build a creation currency portfolio and what is your remedy to maintaining um, an, an optimum level of human creativity in order for humanity to reach the crossroads after and if the Great Reset is um, thwarted? Okay, well, the first thing doesn't have anything to do with art at all. It's about outright denouncing the satanism and the monarchies that have filled this world with all the dark energy for so long we have to get rid of that yes so then what we do is we have to ret retrieve the creative genius level that we now know you know from the nasa study by practicing art it's so simple art right. materials are so simple to get your hands on and and obviously these these protocols of creation in turn are linked to prime creator that's where we come from very good so so it 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 seems that since the advent of computers as i said there's less and less artists so there's less and less creativity because art is such a natural way to express yeah and it's only really through art that you can find this particular process of course architecture you can but you, you you end up more applying your ideas and your creative unit, um, ideas and everything to the actual drawing or the blueprint rather than in the building of it. But when, when you're creating the art, that's it. That's what you're getting. That's the final result. If you sing, you're in a high vibration or speak, your voice is going out into the world, but you don't have anything tangible to show for it at the end. If you dance, you're moving around, you know, the butterfly wing thing. Um, music is incredible, but then they weaponize that too, you know, when they, what did they well, why do? Am I, they why am I having music? images of Nikola Tesla come up? I'm very confused. Oh, you're, you're having images of Nikola Tesla because Are you seeing the screen or not? Art. Are you seeing the screen? Yes, I see the screen. That is art, but it's called a diagram. And without those drawings, Tesla himself wouldn't have 
being able to create what it is that he was creating. Those are the diagrams. So if you move ahead, there's a few more and you'll see how everything is, but we won't call this art. We call it a diagram, but this is some of the most powerful art you'll ever see on planet earth. Agreed. And it has the power to change the world. Agreed. And then of course, following him, I used Leonardo da Vinci because he was outstanding as well. But um, I'm in two minds about Da Vinci because I feel like the this great reset mindset, if you will, co-opted him to do their bidding, and he was creating some very robotic well, looking things. Darling, he was, you know, he he couldn't have survived without patronage, and that was the thing. In those days, the days of the Medici's and the black nobility were really, you know, flying high, and and they took great pride in in. Um, in patronizing the great uh, sculptors and artists and artisans of the day. And so, you know, when his patron summoned him in, you know, to paint a portrait of, you know, or, or of one of the family members or whatever, and then, you know, on the side said, you know, help us build a cannon or a catapult or a trebuchet or something. It was, very, I guess, very difficult for them to say no to their patrons who they relied on for their for their bread and well, to me, to me, that was the, the very, very first steps, the beginning of transhumanism. Oh, he was going into the body. He was looking very deeply. He was opening up bodies. He was creating very robotic kinds of things. And uh, to me, that was the reset that that maybe it wasn't called, called transhumanism then, but that was the very first beginning of it, looking inside to see what could be done. What I mean, but Jane, surely, surely he was, they were that, that, a, that era of great engineer artists was all about working out the mechanics of biology and of, of, and of astronomy and so on. So, I mean, I get why you think it was a kind of AI transhumanist thing, but I, I see it the other way around. I think they were de deducing for the first time, um, the machinations of the human body and of, you know, the heavenly, the firmament and what have you. Or maybe you're right, but um, I don't know. I, I think that there was, I think they were more innocent than that. And certainly so many of the beautiful images that issued through the Michelangelo's and the, uh, and the um, artists like, uh, like we're looking at here, Da Vinci. Um, that there's a beautiful humanistic, innocence i think to a lot of the expressions a lot of the images i don't see it as being um um nefarious put it that way you know well i was actually referring more to the robotics that he the, the machinery the machines of war that he was right. starting to make right and, right but uh, not not an ai at all no relationship to ai at all just just the early first first little baby steps of transhumanism yeah yeah and also it was the beginning of bringing in the synthetic against the organic you know the the energies that sever our divine connection they had a divine connection to cosmos but they've always sought to keep it to themselves yes yes so communing with higher self oh this is a set of works that I put in that on my art just to show the the heights that can be reached, not as I'm saying as a craftsman or as an artist, but conceptually what we can share with our brethren and sistern and the power of art to move from that 3D level using the art materials into the more conceptual area. And, you know, as you go forward, you'll see the names of each piece is a part of the puzzle of humanity moving forward into this new age of enlightenment that's coming yeah. and we have to get ready for it. Very beautiful. And um, I feel that art is really a superb, superb way to connect with that universal intelligence and, and glean inspiration from it. It just teaches us how to do that. And maybe you might start painting and maybe then you might take your art into the obvious things like a more beautiful garden, cooking more nicely, you know, yeah. presentation. 
But then what will happen, it, it will evolve into other areas of life where you are looking at the elements that you've been given to make something with until you get to the point where as a scientist, you can, you've can you learned to play with those elements in a very alchemical way to create something very beautiful and that's helpful for the planet moving forward, you know, service to others. Yes. This kind of thing. And if you're stuck in your little job and your little cubby and you're told what to do, you're never, we're never going to break out of all this. So to me, that's what ascension looks like. There'll be many, many people that are thinking, you know, I just can't wrap my head around this ascension thing. <laughs> but it's just a helpful visual that will yes. put you into that place, you know? Yes. And this is inspired by people who lived so close to the earth, they used to dress in the with the nature around them, the Omo people in the Omo River Basin in Ethiopia. Mm. Love it. This is uh, like Matisse, but better. <laughs> and I'm you. a huge fan of Matisse, huge fan. But I'm a bigger fan of yours. Oh, thank you, Sasha. I really appreciate that. So this is what I'm saying. We're grasping. We're looking. We, we see time moving faster, and we know there's different timelines, and we're wondering what's going on. And then I, I'll step into the ring and say, hey, let's start rearranging the space-time continuum ourselves. Mm. You know what I mean? Just that concept is it's in our hands. We've yeah. let everything go and everybody's an expert and they all know better. And we're just going to sit here and wait to be saved. <laughs> no, we're not. We're going to step forward and we're going to do everything we can conceptually to change things. This one is obviously inspired by the fact that there's so much synthetic coming into our lives from every realm, air, sea, and sky. You know, you had those amazing conferences of um, the weaponization of the biosphere that I attended in Bali, and that was uh, just mind-blowing. And this painting was painted not long after that. Okay. And here's Chanting Destiny. Our Love destiny it. is in our hands. We can do it. You know, we need to step up and start doing that instead of sitting back and obviously paying our taxes. And Beautiful. Thank you for that. Absolutely beautiful. We should do a we should do an auction at some point. Darling. I'd love to do an auction of your work. So how does um, how does creation currency aid in the positive yeah, evolution of humankind and how is it that art is such a major player in our journey toward enlightenment in your view well it's a major player because of almost everything i've said <laughs> and the reason we need to do this is because we have to prepare ourselves well you know after this shit show we're going to get to the other side of it eventually it's going to require a gigantic gigantic amount of creativity moving forward. Zombies will not be able to enter this realm that we're going. Okay. In. So, so, but, so I just want to break it down to a kind of one primary element. You know, the, the, the question um, was really trying to drive toward, um, you know, how does creation currency aid in the positive evolution of humankind? Well, is it because art is the, is the, um, demarcates the transcendent aspect of the creature of the mammal because we're a mammal we're a dog a cat a goat an elephant a dolphin um and one is in that sense at one with the typhonic consciousness or with natural law but they're not painting or sculpting or engineering per se people would argue that spiders engineer and birds' nests are an engineering feat, but that's more just connected into the kind of weird business of being born one of those creatures with those instincts. But I'm talking about creative nous, to have aesthetic and to be able to throw a pot of ceramics, you know, create a, you know, a batik, have a vision 
and then to cast it into the ideation into form so does that is that why art is so important because it's absolutely it's the process that is so amazing it might not be the pot at the end the pot may very be they may very well be very beautiful right but it's the process that teaches us to take ourselves into greater and greater our, our creative aura is so much bigger than we've been led to believe and we don't, we're going to need that kind of creative armor going forward when everything else falls away very good and this shows how in the great civilizations all held art and the arts in such high esteem. There's the palace and over there is the artist's quarters right there next to the palace. Wow. And this is in Greece. And, and we don't do that anymore. And after that, it was the, uh, the Renaissance. They, they held the arts in high esteem. All great civilizations have held the arts in high esteem. We do not. We've just butchered them and turned them into something so ugly. When we look at music, what's been done to music, it's just abhorrent. And the lyrics and just made everything nasty. Mm. You know, it's no longer beautiful. Yes, I I'm hear you. I was talking about that just today with, uh, with a, a dear friend of mine and speaking about the fact that... Um, in fact, we were just going through a feed on on Facebook, and just which I love doing. It for me, it's such incredible um, entertainment to just go onto the Facebook feed, the kind of um, generic one, and then just see the kind of trivia, the kind of trivial shit that's trending. And what it occurred to me, it, it, we lurched from from fist fights, schoolgirls, young girls, 15, 16 year old girls. Um, compilations of them just punching each other's lights out and clawing each other's eyes out and ripping chunks of their hair out in the schoolyard and in the ghettos and on the streets and um, and the screeching going on. And then, of course, the cage fighters and the fist fights of men and um, pub brawls and those things are constantly trending, those really grisly, nasty, bare-knuckle things bestial animalistic in, in extreme and then um moving on to chefs and and cuisine and cooking and lots of that lots of fancy baking and amazing cooking and cuisine so ap everything appetite led but but a lot of bestiality and pornographization of everything meanness of spirit aggressivity and a sheer singular absence of kindness and decency and morality and um, sweetness. None of it. Didn't see a single meme, except when you come, of course, to, you know, some diehard Christian zealot who put, puts up an image of an angel and then some, you know, coy little, little meme. But I'm just looking at that, and I was bereft after 30 minutes of flipping through the public <laughs> feed. I was thinking, we have so fucked ourselves as humanity. I mean, what are these young kids, what goes through their minds? They're so steely and so cunning. Well, this is the problem. It's all coming in, in, in from the screens and the devices, yes. and there's nothing going out. Nothing's right. going out. Right. So as soon as you put paper and paint in front of a person or a child or a teenager even it starts to come out and it stops that relentless cyber barrage from bring back beauty bring back beauty and the other thing i wanted to say that i missed telling you was of course yes there was the renaissance but then there was tartaria and if you look at the word tartaria You'll see in it, it says art and aria. Oh, yeah. Song of, song of art. Very good. And that's almost all it was. Look at this. If you go back, you'll see that that um, th it was just endless, endless art, art, art. And, and yeah. then this, this is the Renaissance where they ejected the whole element of women. You can't find women in anything or anything that they did. It was very male male oriented so they were just dominated. they were just scrubbed they, they just they're just gone they don't exist and the other thing is to have another look at the buildings did the actual renaissance 
usurp and co-opt existing Tartarian buildings? Because right. right. it sure looks like it to me. It sure looks like it to me as well. I mean, bear in mind they were lurching around with uh, oxen and goats, you know, and donkeys, um, you know. <laughs> ah, that's my home. Oh. Yes, and the reason your home is there is because I often search and search the internet looking for beautiful places that... So you show my bedroom on, on a public broadcast? No, because Christy put those in there, and thank you so much, Christy, I love you. <laughs> and she put them in there so that um, I could share your the beauty of your eye as an architect, as an artist. You're so talented in so many ways. You're a singer. It's just incredible what you do. And so what you're doing now, particularly in Bacala, is that's where this learning of arts ends up leading us to. Well, this is you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, that's thanks to Juan Schlosser and uh, and Jan Bolel, um, the two very talented architects that I'm blessed to work with. But indeed, you're right. I mean, for, for me, it's integral. Um, it's integral living in a place of beauty. I cannot live in squalor or in ugliness. Can't do it. Won't do it. Even when so I was I'm poor, even when I was poor, um, I, I used to make my place very, very beautiful, and very cozy. <laughs> That's it. And, you know, I was saying I search and search and search the Internet looking for something that integrates nature and harmony and art and lighting and color and all of those things that you do when you put art together. Mm. And I can't find anything. I always go back to Bali and the nighttime picture from the rice paddy fields. Oh, yeah. And I will also never forget for the first time walking into Akasha and just walking into this place and goosebumps feeling like I finally came home. You know what I mean? Oh, that's so sweet. Well, wait till you see what we're doing in um, in uh, Bacala in Mexico. Dan. I can't wait for you to see what we're doing there because we're taking it to the next level. I mean, Akasha and New Earth Haven in Bali and, and my home is really just the testing ground test bed, a 10 year kind of exercise, but it was a test bed for what we're now doing on a monumental scale. And you can literally fit the um, New Earth Haven and Akasha and my villa in Bali. You could fit it into our land by maybe one and a half thousand times. So it's, yeah, seriously, no, no, no joke. The entire footprint could fit in well over one and a half thousand times. So we are taking this to the <laughs> most um, expansive, idyllic, um, manifest, residential sanctuary. I'm I'm calling it kingdom of heaven on earth because that's exactly what it is. That's what we're divining and that's what we're manifesting. Well, it's just incredible. Which, of course, would uh, goes right against the grain of the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations and the Fabianist agenda, those sons of bitches with their little dark suits and their little dark hearts back in the day, shaping the moral, spiritual, cultural, political and economic decline of the United States of America. Wow. So this answers the question of what happened to art, where did it go and how did they do it? And it's the Brookings and it's the Tavistock. And of yeah. course, it was funded by the Rockefeller Foundation in the 1900s. And they're all, they all work together to make sure because that umbrella is uh, cultural. Art comes under the cultural. And then the, the you can see from here, which isn't a great slide, but it's old and I found it and I'm excited that I have it. And you can see how it's all linked to the military industrial complex, the NGOs, the CIA, the media, the government, Tavistock, CFR, and academia, which I call academentia, which <laughs> is very good is because it's the great forgetting. They want you to unlearn everything that you came in with and start from scratch with them and their funny ideas well darling i tell you that their, their their remonstrations with humanity to forget has not really done much because we won't forget and our art and our poetry and our um our capacity to to remember these things through the mists of ages or even through the mists of incarnations is something which they don't cannot 
contain or enclose or control. But that's also one imagines why these deviants go to the extent of this mass mRNA interventionist exercise, pumping um, these poisons, these gene altering uh, chemicals into human blood all around the world in order to try to create the hack, the bypass that way, because they're not able to curb our genius and our spirit and the fabric of human soul is not something which can actually be codified or gene sequenced the fabric of human soul is so fucking quantum impregnable um yeah but that that seems to be where we're at i mean that very scary image of we just showed the military industrial bilderberg cfr governments you know all of that stuff no Despite all that witchery, it seems to me, Jane, certainly with our relationship and with the relationship with the audience looking in and the subtlety of um, the narratives that we are investigating here and the purity that we're that we're um, that we're shaping and and remembering every time we speak to art or beauty or consciousness, every time we engage, this kind of plasma engagement with the audience on this kind of subtle um, nature, it's, it empowers that stuff. It brings that stuff forth, doesn't it? So when people tear their faces away from television screens and billboards and the predictive programming of these, those satanic images that's constantly bombarding us out there, and instead we use technology to have these conversations and to elevate consciousness. I think, I think we are becoming so remembered to our majesty and to our divinity. That's how I feel. Well, that sounds like um, a very nice ending. <laughs> Hell no, we're not ending yet, girl. I'm not letting you go yet. <laughs> okay. I, I want you to talk about modern art scandal uncovered our children shipped in boxes as live art under the art for embassies program to feed pedophiles and cannibals. Not a pretty picture, but one I think but, we need to speak to. Yeah, this has got really bad. It's called shipping live art and you can do it legally because it's art. And, and Hillary Clinton was involved in this too, although it did start a much, much earlier, quite a long time ago. I forget the exact year, but she ran in there, you know, supporting this art for embassies program like nobody's business because it was a way that they could get away with it between embassies shipping this live art all around. It's, it, it's got so bad, Sasha, that it can't get any badder. You know what I mean? And it, so it has to end. This is what we were speaking to earlier earlier on about the 70% less art sales in Mexico when they changed, their, changed it around and said you couldn't use it to launder money. So, that you know, it's just part of they co-opt it, they take our creativity and they turn it into their fiat, oh, this man is just um, a horror show on legs. It, it's just, have you ever heard of him, Jeff Koons? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's, he's connected to that whole embassy shipping thing too. And he, I believe he sold one of the most expensive pieces of art ever to be sold on earth, you know, and it just looks like a blow up balloon of something. So that, that was obviously connected to money laundering. And here's um, Basquiat. At first I thought he was getting away with murder with his paintings and he was friends with Andy Worrell and he was sadly addicted to heroin and he died very young. But when I had a closer look at his work, I can see the passion and the energy in it. And like I said earlier, you know, he sold it for $19,000 and then it went for 110 million when they pulled it out of some basement. Uh, uh, not that long after he died as well. It was not long, no. Yeah. Gosh. Extraordinary stuff. Extraordinary stuff. Um, just referring to my notes here. Yeah, tell us about the um tell us about the upcoming 
course at New Earth University that you are heading? Yeah, well, it's exactly what I was explaining today. I, I hope teachers will come, come to it because it's everything I said about the process of art. It's called holistic art A to Z. I think you have some visuals on that. So I took a word for for the basics of art, half, half the class will be about the basics of art and how to learn them. And the other half of the, the second hour of the class, there'll be, it'll be the psychological element, like everything that I've told you, academentia, beautification, creation, currency, divinity, evolution, the golden age, all of those things and how to apply them to the art so that we're ready when we go forward into this new age. Beautiful, beautiful. So there's, there'll be four of those classes starting in October, October 4th, two o'clock in the afternoon. So I hope uh, uh, we get some students in there. And I do have one, if, if there's a student that would like a scholarship, they, they can contact me and I can give them a scholarship. That's wonderful. Wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to um, building the New Earth University hard uh, campus in Mexico, which we are planning. We've already done the um, initial master planning, which I'll share with you in the days ahead. Well, I'll get on with you and Chan Chancellor, um, Dr. Nancy Ash, we'll get on together and. Um, I need to explore some more um, ideas about the spatial dynamics connected to how we create the ultimate um, venue for zero point learning in the first instance, which is how we're approaching the education piece at the New Earth Sanctuary, but also how we create this, um, the most beautiful blank canvas upon which people can begin to paint it just sounds like a dream to me. That's like the biggest dream ever. Mm. Yeah. My sister is getting very involved in holograms now. She's building holograms. You, you'll know my sister. She's the one that's accused of being a Satanist along with me because uh, she does fantastic statues of Greek, you know, mythological characters. But no, um, but she's she's now getting into holograms and as well as building huge installations and statues so we're looking to um we'll liaise with you on this but we're looking to also create kind of um um in the parklands of the sanctuary we really want to just turn it into um, a lot of it into art canvas and just uh oh you have that. no idea the joy <laughs> that's just welling up in me at the idea of it i can just see it already it's just so glorious yeah you know it was um it was it was jose arguelas who taught me um didn't teach me he reminded me that time is art not money and when we can switch our thinking from time is money which is the sick demented technocratic luciferian life that most of us are indentured into today when we can transition that um, perversion and mutation of our genius and our divinity we can transition that into understanding that time a doesn't exist and insofar as it does it's a fiction it's an idea that simply um, creates an illusion that an illusory framing of so-called reality, a containment, an enclosure of genius, of quantum, of the quantum mystery, um, in order that we no longer move and flow with that fluidity of the symbiotic interconnection that we innately have with the alpha and the omega, and instead collapse into these formulaic little systematized boxes and units of reality called time, tick-tock, 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 whether we're talking about seconds and minutes and hours, or whether we're talking about great arcs of civilizations and incarnational cycles, it doesn't really matter. 
because life is a very fragile thing. And uh, every night we go to sleep and we die. Every one of us, we move into the into the hinterland of of relativity and we participate in all sorts of realms and dimensional states and and then come back into this 3D temporal realm to be <laughs> butchered again by Klaus Schwab and his, <laughs> you know, by these fantasists. Yeah. Anyway, point point being that um, point being the time is the great fiction, and once we recognize that and can step away from that fiction, and um, every man and woman must at some point in their in their great noble path must step out of time altogether and rekindle uh, relation with the great mystery, which is the fact that we are quantum and we are divine. That is the exact reason to practice art because there's people that go, oh, I can't meditate. I know you said you don't meditate, but I'm not saying that hinders you in any way. And there's people that say, oh, you know, I want to get there, but I just can't connect and or I want to astral travel and I don't know how. And But with art, because it's a mechanism and a vehicle to take you into that place of no time that you so often speak of, and it happens instantaneously and it's a way, it's a doorway. It's another yeah. doorway that we've forgotten about because we're so bogged down with everything else let's play out on this shall we okay yeah it's it's a foggy video but it'll show you this is the greatest threat of all to art because they first started out with this little Susie Susie robot artist to get us warmed up to the idea that art was going to be completely taken over here's the artist being draw, drawing the the, that guy there's her body then this is her first show and he's looking at it like oh my god and then it goes more into computers where um computer art came really hot and fantastic and some of it's very beautiful and then the first ai generated faceless portraits came out and then they got better and better even though that's as ugly as sin they still got better and now, now they're at a point where they can make you look really good and they can even make you look like a fine artist painted you. And then they can also go in and feed off every single image that's ever be, been archived on the internet with a text prompt. They can go and find and steal styles of certain artists and eras and of art, and they can bring it all together in a sort of collage. And, and so now even the AI has taken over even the imaginative imagination side of so that to a degree that, you know, you just throw up your brushes and you say, what's the point? But it's not there yet because you can still tell that it's AI mm. rendered. You can tell it has a why? certain why? Because thing it's, about it. Why? why? Because it's so Dali-esque and nonsensical? Well, it is Dali-esque. No, it's somehow the way that it's put together. If you look at a lot of art, you can just tell this is AI generated. Look what it's doing to, you know, original classic masterpieces. And this is a real a real uh, collage portrait that I did to just show a contrast. And so um, it's, it's a big threat to artists right now, especially if you do portraiture. You know, you just might be out of a job which is very, very sad. I did a video called AI Alert on my YouTube channel, and you can go and see in detail how much it has infiltrated the art world just in the last three years. Fascinating. Jane, this has been a delightful, delightful um, hour and and some, not quite sure how long this is, it's a little over an hour. Uh, thank you for this, it's been wonderful. And I think, um, I think at some point soon we should revisit our um, corrected history lectures, and um, because so much more has surfaced in the course of the last yeah. almost a year since we would we started doing that, you know, 
Um, so let, let's think about doing that. I'm thinking about including a, a, a new segment every in every Lazarus Symposium moving forward on the updated corrected history. Yeah. That would be amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us, darling girl. And to the okay, audience. Okay, thank you, Sasha. I love you. Love you too, darling. And to the audience, um, um, check out the New Earth uh, Horizon website, newearthhorizon.com. Um, check it out and chase the links there through to Jane's workshop at the New Earth University. All right, friends, over and out. Mm -hmm.